Imagine a world where dragons, goblins, and monsters exist. A world that various creatures share with mankind, where magic is a fact of life. How does it feel to live in that world? Live. As in live as a common person, struggling to make ends meet, looking for a job, or laboring in the fields. Most fantasy stories focus on the glamorous people inhabiting those imaginary worlds. The knights and adventurers hunting treasure, the ones shaping the fate of nations and fighting tyrants. The one percent, so to say, those touched by destiny. Few, however, examine the fate of the 99 other percent of people making up that world. The merchants, peasants, and civilians who seemingly only exist for the heroes to save. The Wandering Inn does. Started in July 2016 by Pirate Abba, The Wandering Inn is an online web serial, a dig digital novel, whose chapters are published at regular interval on a blog instead of as a full book, which allows the author to co communicate with their community and receive feedback. The content of the first volume, 1 out of 5, which this video covers, has been compiled on Amazon Kindle for purchase. You can find the link in the description below. The story follows Erin Solstice, a young woman from our world transported to a fantasy land under mysterious circumstances. Instead of gaining power or being offered the opportunity to become a hero, Erin ends up settling as an innkeeper near the town of Liskor. Liskor is a city mostly inhabited by non-human creatures, from the hyena lake gnolls to the reptilian drakes. It is a town near the frontier of civilization, beyond which monsters rule vast expanses of wilderness. The discovery of ancient ruins near the city allows for an economic boom, leading Erin to slowly develop her business and make a life for herself. As explained earlier, most fantasy stories deal with glorious adventures and epic conflicts. The Wandering Inn instead focuses on mundane life in a supernatural world, and the various characters living in it. While Erin remains the central character, the story follows multiple protagonists, each sharing a different viewpoint, from small-scale adventurers to Liskor City Watch. Due to the very nature of her job, Erin remains anchored to the Liskor area instead of traveling around the, her world, making the story an exercise in depth rather than extensivity. Instead of a quest through multiple areas and landscapes, the Wandering Inn explores the life of the various characters, the local society, and its struggles. If anything, Liskor is as much a character as Erin herself, its people changing over the course of the story. The Wandering Inn's story is not one of great fights between good and evil, or a seemingly average person turning out to be exceptional, with a unique destiny to fulfill. What makes the Wandering Inn's story unique is that it is Erin's life, as in her experience trying to live a normal life in a world that is very far from it. The main plotline, especially in the first volume, is Erin developing her clientele, meeting new people, and developing her business. You truly get the feeling that a community builds over the course of the serial, which culminates in the story's climax. The Wandering Inn's greatest strength, besides its original story, are the characters and their interactions, starting with the main lead herself. Stories focusing on a human from Earth being transported to another world have become common enough to form a genre in itself, called Isekai, another world in Japanese. While very popular among Japanese light novels, hence the name, they are also quite common among web novels. The protagonists of these stories are usually blank slates without personal history and little personality traits. This serves a pretty simple purpose. Having a relatively featureless protagonist allows the reader to project themselves into that character, identify with their struggles, and see the new world with the same eyes. These heroes eventually develop core personality traits after going through the story's events, but it takes time for them to feel unique. Erin is refreshingly different. She starts with a very clear personality, charming, oddly clever and stubborn, but also humorlessly airbrained at some times, quite easy to deceive and passionate about chess. She had dreams before going to the fantasy world, to become an astronaut and then a chess commentator, a childhood passion which she brings to the new world. She also never gives up on finding a way to return home, while most protagonists of isekai stories tend to move on after a certain, certain time. This makes her stand out and gives her a clear, relatable goal at first, to make enough money to survive, then to pay a wizard to send her back to Earth. Neither does she benefit from unique advantages. Power fantasies are common in the fantasy genre, which you can guess from the name. We want to become knights, romance the princess, and kill the dragon. We crave the excitement of adventure we usually don't get in day-to-day -day life. However, many stories take the escapism too far, making their heroes idealized, invincible, and difficult to relate to. The Wandering Inn takes the opposite approach, making Eren relatable rather than idealized. While the characters achieve great things such as defeating powerful horrors, they do it through wit in a believable manner, and most of the conflicts are mundane. 
In fact, more often than not, we faced similar difficulties, like struggling with customers, and thus empathize with Erin's struggle. As the plot progresses, and Erin develops her business, she gains a recurring clientele of lovable characters with strong interactions. From the goblin rags, to the city guardsman Kelk, the various inhabitants of the Wandering Inn's world have a strong personality like the main lead, and develop over time. Take one of Aaron's first customers, Pisces. A sorcerer on the run from the authorities, he makes a living by robbing people, with Aaron being one of his attempted victims. Key word being attempted here, as Aaron manages to trap him. However, when learning he will be executed for his acts, if delivered to the city watch, she spares him and allows him to stay at the inn. Pisces ends up repaying the favor by slowly moving away from his criminal ways, including designing a skeleton automaton to serve as the inn security. While never losing his haughty, contemptuous demeanor, Pisces ends up being a more complex and relatable character than his initial appearance would imply, with a fully realized character arc over the course of the novel. The characters also interact between each other, instead of just Eren, allowing for believable dynamics to set in place, slowly forming the community coming together at the end novel's end. Besides the very premise, The Wandering Inn challenges many cliches of the isekai genre, or tries to take a different approach in handling them. The fantasy world Eren lives in is ruled by a game-like level system. Individuals gain levels in a particular class or profession, like innkeeper or guard, gaining appropriate skills and abilities as they grow. Unlike other game systems though, these classes aren't based on abstract things, like experience points or numbers, but on learning and personal fulfillment. A major scene has Eren, a chess prodigy, find herself unable to gain levels through chess unlike her opponent because she considers it a game instead of tactical training. Classes are thus more than just powers or points, but the role a person wishes to play in the world, which colors every aspect of the setting, even physical appearance. Like many conventions, the class system exists yet is rarely questioned. The level system is more than a background element, and many characters react differently to it. For example, Eren tries to learn how to become a wizard, only to find out she lacks the potential. Unable to use force or supernatural factors to get ahead, she must rely on her wits and social charm to make her way in the world. Another character, Ryoka, a Japanese girl in a similar situation to Eren, ends up shutting the level system entirely out of skepticism and tries to get by through her own abilities. The idea of characters doubting or asking themselves where the equivalent of magic comes from is quite novel in, the, in this kind of story. This rational approach makes the world feel more grounded, as various characters make theories about its rules, the same way our scientists once discussed gravity. The Wandering Inn's focus on the working class of a fantasy world also explores the daily struggles of those people. Most fantasy stories following adventurers treat monster attacks as a once an episode event, with the adventurers driving out the monsters and saving the village. The Wandering Inn shows what happens after the heroes leave. The monsters rebuild their numbers and come back, and the cycle begins anew. Erin spends most of the first volume trying to protect her inn from robbers and goblins, before befriending the latter group and investing in security. Indeed, one of the main themes of the Wandering Inn, which we found the most impactful, is racism. The city of Liskor is mostly inhabited by various non-human humanoids, most of them not very fond of humans. A particularly moving scene during the first volume's beginning has Erin being refused as a client by various merchants, before being cheated by the only one willing to supply her with overpriced goods. That kind of small, pervasive, petty cruelty is all too common in our own world, and perhaps more striking than grand gestures. Those moments alongside others, such as Eren being unable to read the native lung language, are what make the story so relatable. The reasons why monsters keep attacking civilization is also given a believable cause, namely revenge and racial tensions. Liskor's guards treating Goblin as a vermin to be exterminated becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, as the creatures develop vendettas and target innocents for their fallen kin. This only encourages civilized species to hate them back. All in all, most of the world's conflicts feel deeper and sadder, because most monsters aren't evil by nature. In spite of its realistic approach and mature themes, The Wandering Inn is an optimistic work. The story never feels grim and oppressing, with Eren actively taking her life into her own hands and trying to improve the world around her, fighting the racism she herself suffered from by welcoming all clients into her inn including goblins that previously attacked her on a semi-regular basis. A particularly impactful scene leads to various customers from various species, who usually don't get along, learn to play a chess tournament together. The Wandering Inn posits that people of different backgrounds and origins can live in harmony if they make the effort to rise above their preconceptions. 
It's a bit unfortunate it took very long for the cast, which is clearly the novel's strong point, to appear. The story's pacing is slow by design, which may not fit everyone's expectations. Since there is no grand struggle with an evil force, battles are few and far between. While this helps develop characters, readers ex expecting strong action will be left disappointed. Overall though, readers looking for a more personal, character-centric story will find themselves right at home. In the end, what makes The Wandering Inn so great? The fact that in spite of taking place in a world of dragons, magic, and game mechanics, it feels real. It feels like an actual normal person's life story, with mundane, relatable struggles. The story makes you empathize with its lead and engaged in her story. We hope you enjoyed this video and that it convinced you to check out The Wandering Inn. The art and soundtrack used in this video all come from The Wandering Inn's amazing fan community, with the due credits and links in the description below. Big thanks to System Glitch 101 for his help with the soundtrack. You can also find a link to the author's website and ebook below the video if you want to support the story. Don't forget to subscribe for more content, and see you soon.